I took this from, from Keith's template for the conference, and he, he seemed to always end with a panel. And, and I was desperately thinking what question to ask the panel. And I first chose them because all of these four have experience of analysts in a variety of different backgrounds, some academic, some commercial, some suppliers even, Gordon on the end. And then I was asking, thinking, well, what questions shall I ask them? And then I had this strange brainwave of asking them the questions that I'd asked everybody else and, and give them some practice. So if I could ask you to introduce yourselves, just give you a little bit of background, and then we'll go back to these questions about career paths and balance. James first. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm James Gooding. I'm from the co-op in the food division. And um, I've been in that job for about a year. Before that, I was studying for a PhD in something completely different. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Dean Riddleston. I'm a senior data scientist at Boots. Um, before joining Boots, I did a PhD in uh, geographic data science. Um, prior to that, uh, undergraduate master's in urban planning and a postgraduate master's in quant research. Thank you. Also tapping. <laughs> um, my name is Emma White. I'm the Assistant Director of the Admin Data Research Centre for England. I'm based in the University of Southampton. I'm also currently on a part-time secondment to Natsen Social Research, where I'm their Head of Administrative Data. And at the same time, I'm the Deputy Chair of the Market Research Society Census and Geodemographics Group. My background is in mathematics. I, I have a PhD in mathematical modelling. Um, I'm former ONS. I was four and a half years in the Office for National Statistics working on census and then on administrative data. Thank you. I'm Gordon Farkson. I'm director of analytics for a small database consultancy called Mo2. Um, as Tim mentioned before, I've worked across virtually all sectors, um, government, market research, um, data supplier, agency, and client side. I've just got academia to go, um, so that's my, <laughs> that's my retirement plan. Um, but I, I'm trained as a, as a government statistician from start, so I, I did a degree in statistics, and I've gone through all the transformations of statistician, data engineer, data analysts, data scientists. Um, so uh, in terms of a career, yeah, I think I've covered all sort of um, terminology um, <laughs> that way. So I mean, one of the other things I love about Doug is the chance to get in the same room as you've got on the panel people from at all different stages of their career, from just having started, James, thank you very much for volunteering, to those who are getting long in the tooth, shall we say, Gordon. We, we knew each other a long, long time ago. It was probably too long ago, isn't it? 20 years ago, I think, we met. So we've been around the block, shall we say. So if you could each just articulate what you think a, career, a good career path would look like and all your experience of it, that would be fantastic. James, first. Yeah, when you emailed me this question, it was kind of one of those things where it's, and how am I going to answer that? But I think in this morning's uh, talk from Seth, it was really interesting to see that he's picked up a lot of experience of life more generally, and that a lot of what he's picked up has led him back to the importance of good data analysis. So I wouldn't say, of course, there's no like hard and fast uh, way that someone should progress through their career. Um, I think having that kind of innate um, desire to, to see the, the quality of your arguments, that's, that's something that might just have to be there already, but that you should nurture that and try and develop as many skills to help you express that as possible. Brilliant. Thank you, James. Dean? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd reiterate some of the some of the same points, um, and, and going back to Seth's presentation this morning, um, I don't think there, there necessarily is a, a, a clear path to sort of becoming a, a data analyst or a data scientist. And particularly for me, um, I, I would say I fell into this, but that's not strictly true. But uh, I did, I did start uh, an undergraduate degree in urban planning, um, and was sort of hell bent that, that I wanted to be an urban planner until I, I graduated in the middle of a, a financial crisis um, and nobody was really building anything. So it was a fairly, <laughs> fairly difficult degree to, to, to pitch to, to, to prospective employers. And obviously I went back and, and did PhD um, and I picked up a lot of skills uh, during that research. But as that, as that part of my career 
path came to a close, I did find myself thinking, do I want to stay in research and, and do I want to be a data analyst in, in, in academia or do I want to try and transition to, uh, to industry? And I, and I was a bit worried that if, if I did move into industry, maybe I would have some of the sort of freedom um, and the space to, to explore new methods uh, taken away from me. But, but I'm happy to say I've been working for Boots for, for uh, nearly two years now. In fact, it was two years ago at this conference that I actually approached Martin and asked if he would consider giving me a job. <laughs> um, I'm very glad he has. And, um, we, are, we are hiring as well. I should probably just get that in there. Um, yeah, and, and really, um, Martin and, and my senior management team have given me uh, a huge amount of space to, to develop my, my, my own skills further um, whilst working uh, for, for a very large multinational company. Um, my boss has actually coined the term going on safari um, as, as something that I do and uh, did, did, did reveal in a one-to-one in a -one, um, management session a few weeks ago that when I, when I first joined the business there was some concern that I was spending too much time on, on safari. Um, I, I did raise the point that sometimes I bring things back. Um, <laughs> but, but for me, I, I guess I thought... Yeah, good. moving into industry is, is going to be easy. Um, I'm, I'm basically going to do the same the same stuff. Um, I'm just going to work in a bigger office. Um, and they, they probably won't let us have a fridge stocked full of beer or allow us to play football in the corridors. But um, in terms of, of, of analytics, yeah, I've been given a lot of space. I've, I've definitely continued to learn, um, and that's been really important for me. So in terms of my development, it, it's, it's sort of... A lot of it's been off my own back, but, but as a business, we do really support our analysts and, and any courses and you know, any, anything that they feel is going to benefit them and help them to develop, we, we're really supportive of. So fairly, fairly odd sort of path to the position that I'm in at the moment, but I think that's, um, that's sort of reflective of a lot of the people that I work with. Um, no, nobody's really followed a, a particular structured route to, to sort of um, move into, into data science and analytics. Thank you, Dean. Emma? I, I definitely agree with the, with the last point. Um, I suppose to go back to, to the original question, no, I don't think there's a clear career pathway. Um, I do think there's possible advantages to um, that kind of a pathway. To, for example, it might encourage people to enter the profession and, and all of those kinds of things. However, I also think that there's a benefit in people finding themselves in positions coming from very, very different directions on the way. And, and I think that's very important. My own... Um, my own background is equally eclectic. I really wasn't very sure what I wanted to do when I left school. I had specialised in, in languages, but I liked physics too. Um, after school, I, I went, I actually, I did a secretarial course. Then I worked for independent newspapers. Then I worked for the Bank of Ireland. I worked for accountancy firms. I picked up various banking exams and financial exams and so on. And I thought that I would put those exams towards doing a degree in business by night time while I was working. And in my first year, I was doing a subject called quantitative techniques. I had been reasonably average at mathematics when I was in school. I quite liked it, but I couldn't quite see the point. And we had the most inspiring lecture in this, lecturer in this particular course. And he was particularly inspired by the application of mathematics and statistics to sporting events. So we spent a lot of time discussing the probability of Arsenal winning the FA Cup. Um, usually high, on, <laughs> it was a few years ago. <laughs> um, it was usually on, on Tuesday nights. And he was hugely passionate and very, very inspiring. And suddenly it was like a light switch went off in my head, which is, wow, this actually means something. Mathematics and statistics are not an abstract concept. They actually have meaning in the real world. Um, in a fit of great enthusiasm, I approached the, the lecturer and I asked him um, why I couldn't see that I could continue the model in the second year. And he said, nobody ever does it. It's too hard. So we took it off. So in a slightly um, unusual move, I talked my way into a post, uh, uh, a mature student undergraduate degree in mathematical science, having not done maths for maybe seven years. It was hard. It was really, really difficult. And I am very grateful to, the, to Dublin City University, who actually said, oh, all right, go on, give it a go. Um, I went, having moved through my, my degree, in which I also worked in risk management, I got very involved in, in disease modeling and so on. I was lucky enough to go straight on to do a PhD in, in mathematics, where I applied epidemiological principles to social research problems. And at this point, I was hooked, because I could really see 
going back to, to what had inspired me, here are how the techniques applied to data can make a difference in the real world. And I, I just loved it. So I continued on to, to work on various projects around problem drug use and so forth, all using these transferable skills. Because the one thing I've learned is how many people are frightened of numbers. And as soon as people think, erroneously or not, that you're good at mathematics, they automatically assume that actually you have all the answers. Of course you don't. There's many, many people who are much better at these things than I am. But it does break the barriers so that people will actually, you know, kind of view you as a person who can help me with the, will help them with those problems. I then moved to the UK, um, having having been lecturing and working in universities and so on, and I joined the Office for National Statistics. And I had fantastic opportunities there to work with, you know, really large data sets to meet some really super analysts all about answering questions. I mean, working on the census is, for, for a data person, one of the most exciting things you can possibly do. It's, it's also hard, it's long hours, it can be very high pressure and stressful, but what a data set and what, you know, the things that we learn. But what was really important is that um, you had to very much understand the strategy, the management, the sensitivities to, to public trust, to questionnaire design and so on. You had to understand all of that. And for me, understanding the big picture has been very, very important in my career. Not just having my head in the detail, but taking a step back and being able to see that wider importance. Um, I'm now, as I say, working with the University of Southampton, the Admin Data uh, Research Centre for England, and that's also been really interesting. I'm learning a lot about ethics, about data protection, about consent, about actually the practical implementation of using administrative data in a research context. So I feel I'm learning all the time. Um, if someone were to ask me, was I an expert at something, I'd say no. <laughs> um, but equally, sometimes what I find is I know a little bit more about it than other people do. And I think that it's very important to have confidence and actually say, I do know a bit. Maybe I don't know everything. And that allows you to open, to open the dialogue. Brilliant. Thank you, Emma. Gordon. It's OK. Career path. Um, I, could, I could almost open by just sort of saying, what, how do we define an analyst? Um, because analysts come in all shapes and sizes. Um, I view myself as a problem solver, and I do it with data. Um, that's how I, I approach problems. And it's been mentioned a number of times, curiosity is what sort of drives me. So the problems themselves, yeah, are, are, you know, is basically the start of, of, of your career. And trying to solve it and solve it in different ways and make it useful and actionable is really what drives you to get into a good solution. So in terms of, of a career path, um, the first thing you must have is, do you want to be a problem solver or do you want to commission somebody else to solve it? Um, if you actually want to dive into the deep end and, and be the person that comes up with a solution, then great. That's an analytical career. Um, you're then sort of trying to find the industry which, which best suits you and the types of information that best suits you. So you could be doing clinical trials. You could be doing quantitative anal analysis in the city. Um, I chose to do consumer behaviour marketing analysis. Um, so taking that on board and, and what my background is in terms of, of actually liking problems, um, you have to like problems in order for you to, to sort of approach them and look at different approaches in different ways. When it comes to your career, your career is almost a case of, um, and I've worked through government and market research, as, as I've said before, the best, the most satisfaction you have, and what, and almost a gauge on how you, where you are in your career, is how close you get to the person with the problem. So, when you start off in government, you're very, very distant from where the problems originated and the person who's actually, you know, needs to put the solution into action. So you get, uh, as was mentioned before, very limited context as to the bit of analysis that you're trying to do. So you end up um, starting your career as somebody that can do. Yeah? And doing, you learn the tools, um, and you learn how to apply them, which, which test goes with which type of data, you know, how you need to organise your data, what metrics you need. As you then sort of improve your career, you're not necessarily adding to the tools. You're understanding where they fail. And you're learning that, you, you're doing that understanding and then you're working out, OK, if I build this model, there's always a model that's better. Um, but I need to know, in what circumstances will that model not work? 
Then you're developing the understanding element. And the understanding is when your career starts to take off because then you get closer and closer to the problem, um, the person with the problem, and then you go back to your five-year-old bit and you say, why? And that is the biggest word yeah, in an analytics, an analytics vocabulary. Yeah, you want to know, why do you think that? Why is that a problem? Why do you think that's the solution? Then you're exploring, and we heard it before, in terms of how you bring it into action. So, as long as, so in terms of a career path, the closer you get and the more experience you gain to, the, to actually engage with the person with the problem, you can actually look at the objective and look at the question and then frame that in a way that gives them the best possible action that they can take. Um, and, I, and although it's hard to sort of map that out, I've, I've got analysts that, that I take in from graduate, straight from university, and they've got a tick list of all the things they want to learn. And as soon as they've got, you know, 75% of the way down the tick list, they go, right, I'm due for a promotion. I know this, 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 and this. And it's almost a case of, yeah, you do know it, but it's what experience have you got? How, how can you actually engage with um, you know, the, the person with the problem? How can you actually engage and bring that out? So it's the experience element, the intangible part, which almost sort of um, work, uh, basically sort of determines how your career is progressing as an analyst. And I think we always forget that you know, it, it's, it's the action at the end and how that actually works. And that goes back to the con con consultation part, which you only really build up with experience and how you move that forward. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm, learn I'm learning a little bit. I'm a similar to saying that analysts don't always stick to the rules. Thankfully, we like to break them, which means that I'm not, I'm not going to ask the second question. We'll never fit in the time. And I, I have to thank Sue. I think she's still here. When I sat down and talked to her six months ago about my hope that actually we might be able to build some sort of career path that would encourage people to sort of take on this route, she said to me, a very simple question, have you actually asked whether any of them want it? Which I think is a really neat question. And I think the conclusion from today, and, I, and it sort of fits with what I'm like as well, is actually, if you look at that picture, the analysts are those who want to walk off the path. They want to walk through the, the bush and through the trees and through the place where it's not that obvious. And perhaps they don't really want a clear path. And I really liked your comment, James, about saying, focus on the fact that you're going to argue well and solve the problems. And it almost doesn't matter what the problem is, but just keep looking for problems that you can't solve. Be prepared to fail, a bit like Neil talked about. And, and so take responsibility for your own development while solving somebody else's problem. I'm now going to stop. Thank you. That was really helpful, seeing that stretch and seeing you break the rules and give me a time problem. But I love it. Thank you. Thanks very much.